The day had started out well. She didn't really know if it was all well, but it was more of the same. She didn't even notice when she missed her period only after the doctors doing the constant checkups had asked her about it. They had brushed it off as just her missing it because of the stressful situation and sent her back to her tent and she very much did the same. Everything had been fine till just over a month after being saved from the city and just over a week since her last checkup. She was standing in line in the morning to get food with the other survivors. She had seen Anjo waiting in line a few places back. They had only made eye contact and gave each other a nod before going into the line. It was small, but Nayan was grateful for it because it was more than anyone else did. It was so sudden, one moment she was standing in line waiting to see what was the holdup, and the next she felt so sick that she momentarily felt herself lose her footing before she regained it. She felt herself wanting to vomit and immediately rushed out of the line looking for somewhere she could get some relief. This didn't go unnoticed by the guards, and more importantly by An Jo who rushed after her. Nayan couldn't get far and went behind a wall to relieve herself. Anjo arrived to see Nayan retching herself behind the wall and after a moment of hesitation, rushed to help her. Nayan, are you okay? What's wrong? She asked quickly, trying to find out what was going on. She had been watching over Nayan, but she seemed okay even this morning. The guards arrived at the same time rifles at the ready and Anjo went in front of Nayan, who was still retching behind her. What's going on here? They asked, and Anjo could already see the two guards tightly gripping their weapons ready to gun them down. She didn't want a misunderstanding. More than a few of those had already happened when the guards accidentally shot some people they thought were sick with the zombie virus. She's just feeling sick. I was going to take her to the doctor right now. The guards were looking at her suspiciously and glancing behind her to see Na Yan, who had stopped vomiting behind her. Siok Wu, make sure they make it there. Shoot them if they try anything, one of the soldiers said, who seemed to be the superior before he turned and left. So cautiously, Nayan and Anjo walked to the doctor's office. Nayan could feel Anjo's eyes roaming over her, trying to look for the cause that she didn't know herself. Anjo helped Nayan along with the ever-looming presence of the soldier behind them, Normally, they had to wait to see the doctor, but the soldiers quickly waved them through, and moments later they found themselves in the room, and another soldier had joined the group. The doctor rushed out and quickly conducted many tests looking for the virus and other things. The two of them had waited anxiously in the waiting room with the soldiers and their weapons at the ready as they all awaited the results. The doctor returned with a small smile on her face. It's okay, boys. She's not sick. The soldiers nodded at the doctor and left. Then why was I vomiting my insides out there? Nayan asked, because she definitely was sick. Oh, that's simple, dear, you're pregnant. The room went quiet as the words left the doctor's mouth. That can't be possible, I never, I, I only did it a few times. I, Nayan was trying to find the words because she had only ever done it with one person. Cheong San she said with a whimper, and Anjo turned to face her confused. What do you mean, Chung San? she asked, confused, because she knew they got close somehow during their whole escapade, but they didn't get that close, right? I only slept with one person, Nayan said nervously, because she still didn't honestly know how Anjo felt about Chung San even after all this time, not that they had any time to talk about it. She saw Anjo's face shift confusedly as she let go of the grip on Nayan's hand. But, but how? That was easy for Nayan to answer. I thought I wasn't going to make it. We both thought we might not, and I wanted to share something special with him because he would risk his life to save me even after all I had done to him. I didn't get it. I fell for him then. I just didn't know our time together would be so short. Anjo was just trying to process all of this, but it explained Chiang San's behavior and how he always seemed so attached to her. She started pacing around as Na Yan tried to sift through all of her thoughts, guilt, fear, anger, and happiness, but more so was the feeling of sadness because Chiang San wasn't going to know about this. That's what finally brought her to tears. As soon as An Zhou heard her crying, she turned around. She hated how she felt right now, 
because this was Na Yan and Cheong San's baby, and she had made it somehow about her. Anjo came and embraced her as she cried. The doctor just watched them closely as Anjo tried her best to reassure her that everything was going to be fine. She walked up to the two, confused. Apologies if this news has proved to be upsetting. We can take measures to deal with the situation if you would like. Nayan's head immediately shot up. No, she said with a shout, momentarily startling the doctor, and Anjo, a guard, rushed in. Is everything okay, doctor? The doctor simply waved away the soldier. It's all right. The soldier lurked for a moment before stepping out and closing the door. It's okay, Nayan. Nothing is going to happen without your permission, okay? Anjo said the last part questioningly, looking at the doctor. The doctor nodded, but she could still feel the glare on her from Nayan as she already went to clutch protectively over her stomach. Nothing will happen except me allowing them to assign you more rations if you decide to keep the pregnancy. The decision was already clear in Nayan's head, the last piece of Cheong San, a part of her and him together, she sure as hell was not going to get rid of it, of her, him, of her baby, of their baby. I'm keeping it, she said decisively without any hesitation. She didn't even have a plan. She was alone here, but she wasn't going to give this up. Fantastic. Then I will write you up to receive more rations and you must come here at least once a month or whenever you feel something is wrong. Anjo listened as the doctor spoke but she could see that Nayan's mind was a million miles away. So when the doctor finished talking and left, she had only spoken to Anjo till once again they were left in the room alone. You okay? Anjo asked nervously as she moved towards the girl, the one that was carrying a part of Cheong San in her, the last part of her best friend, her family. I'm fine. It's just a lot, a lot to think about. Anjo at least understood that much, Okay, let's get you to bed so you can rest. I will go get some rations for you. Nayan just nodded wordlessly. She didn't even remember how Anjo got her to her bed that day, only that she woke up the next day with Anjo sitting in her tent. I have to tell my parents, Nayan said a few days later as she got up. She immediately felt sick and was surprised when Anjo handed her a bucket that was at the side of her bed because she hadn't had that before. After a few painful minutes of spilling her guts out in the bucket, with Anjo rubbing her back and spurting out reassurances, she finally managed to regain her composure. That was the beginning of Anjo becoming her shadow, always hovering around like a mother hen. Nayan understood at first it was probably because of the baby and her being Cheong San's, but she was just happy for any company. With her always in close proximity, it allowed for them to talk, not without resistance at first, as Nayan's first attempt to get to know the other girl had been shut down. But after distancing themselves and Nayan saying she would leave her alone, the other girl eventually relented, because if she couldn't see Nayan, then she couldn't see the baby. With them now forced together, Anjo knew that she had to now talk with her more, and Cheong San would never forgive her if she abandoned her and his baby. Then a few days later came a day Nayan had been dreading, the day she told her parents. She tried to make all sorts of excuses for herself, but after a firm push from Anjo and Chong San's voice in her head, she had gone inside. Their call started off as normal as they all did with her dad going off on a tangent about what he had been up to. She was glad he had taken some time off because he looked more like his old self from her memories. Her mom just looked on nervously. Dad, Mom, I have something to tell you, she said quickly, stopping her dad's story about what he had done on the weekend. What is it, Princess? Is everything okay? Her father asked in a low tone, his eyes already narrow as if ready to cut down anyone who messed with her. That power was a blessing and a curse, and she hated how she remembered abusing it so much in the past. It's nothing bad, Dad. At least I think, depends on what you say. Nayan took a deep breath. I'm pregnant. Her dad just looked at her while her mom looked between his face and her face on the screen. And I'm going to keep it. That seemed to reawaken her father. Who is he? What is his family's name? I swear when I find that boy, I'm going to... He's dead, she said a bit choked, and her father's anger immediately deflated. He died getting me out, she said, 
and she had to shake away her tears because she had to get this out now. Her mother covered her mouth as her father tried to find any words he could say, but there were none. I did something when we were in there that seemed to garner her parents' attention more. What did you do, honey? If she wasn't so broken about what she wanted to reveal, she would have voiced her surprise that her mother was the one who asked the question. Nayan seemed to remember where she was as one of the guards shifted. They were listening to everything and everyone. She had no doubt that they would probably lock her up. All the survivors knew that the army always wanted to get rid of them. She also remembered that now she wasn't alone. How could she be so selfish? So she shook her head, wiping the tears away, and looked at her parents' faces marred with concern. I will tell you some other time. But the important thing is, he forgave me, even protected me after everything I had done. Her parents just listened to her closely. We were together for a while, and one thing led to another, and now I'm here, without him. Oh, honey, her mother said. Na Yon furiously wiped away her tears and then awaited her parents' answer. Are you sure that you are ready? This is different from having a puppy, her father said with a small, strained smile and laugh. I'm ready, Dad. After everything that happened, I learned just how short life can be, she said the statement, knowing she had seen people die and taken a life far too quickly herself. And it still aided her. The rest of their conversation proceeded as the many others had, but this time her mother was interjecting more, trying to subtly ask questions about her and the baby. Na Yan could see out of the corner of her eye every time her mother glanced down momentarily to her stomach. She was glad that they hadn't asked too much about Cheong San, because when her father did, he had seen how she had froze with a pained expression, and her mother had quickly changed the topic. They could see how he still affected her. The timer rang. I guess it's time to go, she said as she moved to get up. Nayan, her mother quickly said, surprising both her and her father. We will be coming to see you soon, so please take care of yourself, she said before getting up and moving out of shot, leaving her confused father and herself. After a few quiet moments and the interruption of a guard, she simply replied, I will, before she turned and left. Things had progressed at a somewhat rapid pace since that day. Anjo had started sticking to her like glue at her beck and call. Nayan wasn't going to take advantage of it. She already had seen what she had done when someone had her best interest at heart, and she twisted it, and she wouldn't repeat the same mistake. Nayan had been worried about how she was going to connect with Anjo, but she had found the answer much simpler. Chong San. That was someone she wanted to know everything about, and she had known him her whole life. Anjo had been cagey at first, as if only trying to keep the memories of him to herself. But when she recognized that this was now the mother of Chong San's baby, she knew that the other girl should have a picture of who he was, and so began their talks. And with the more information she got about Chong San, the more she opened up to her parents about him. She could never really gauge what they all thought of him, especially her mother, since he wasn't from a prestigious family, even when they had come to see her and were separated by a giant glass and armed soldiers. Their fellow survivors had been confused about her new relationship with Anjo because they saw her go from cold and distant to always attentive and there. Especially Su Hyok had noticed, since Anjo had stopped hovering around him as if waiting for him to rebound from Namra. They had all got together to watch the two as they went about the day. So what do you think is going on? Daisu asked the rest of the party. I don't know. It looked like Anjo had ditched her, but now we barely ever see her alone, Suhyok said as he saw the two talking with some small smiles on their faces. Mijin was just eating her rations at the back of the group. I mean, we can just ask them, she said, to which everyone in the group just stared at her. What? The group went back to staring and watching them as everyone else ate their food. The group had mostly gotten closer in the intervening time, with them not really knowing anyone else in the camp. Seeing other survivors being taken only reinforced the bond between the group.